Before Johnny Carson became known as the king of late-night television, he was just a young magician performing at local rotary clubs. But as he honed his interviewing and comedic skills, he eventually became one of America's most recognizable faces. In 1962, Carson was given the opportunity to host The Tonight Show after Jack Parr stepped down, and he quickly established himself as a pioneer in the television industry. For the next 30 years, he entertained audiences with his quick wit and charisma, bringing on guests such as Bob Hope, Steve Martin, and many others. Carson's reign as the king of late-night television finally came to an end on May 22, 1992, after a highly successful 30-year run. Although he left behind a legacy as a pioneer in the industry and a beloved entertainer, his impact on late-night television will always be remembered. Johnny Carson was born on October 24, 1925 in Corning, Iowa. When he was eight, his father, Kit, packed up the family, which included his mother Ruth, sister Catherine, Johnny, and younger brother Richard, and moved to Norfolk, Nebraska. Johnny, known as the Great Carsoni, performed magic tricks for his mother's bridge club and church socials. The name Great Carsoni was displayed on a black velvet cloth draping his magician stand. As a senior in high school, Johnny's life changed when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. After graduation, he enlisted in the United States Navy and served for two years in non-combative positions. He was later assigned to the United States ship Pennsylvania but the ship was torpedoed by the Japanese in Okinawa just two days before his arrival. During his time on the island of Guam in the South Pacific, Johnny entertained the troops with his ventriloquist dummy, Eddie. During Johnny Carson's time in the Navy, he had a memorable experience while serving on board the USS Pennsylvania. One of his duties was to decode and deliver messages. It was during this time that he had the chance to meet Secretary of the Navy, James Forrestal. According to a popular story, Forrestal asked Carson if he wanted to make the Navy his career, to which Carson responded by entertaining the secretary with some jokes and card tricks. After leaving the Navy, Carson returned to Norfolk and enrolled at the University of Nebraska. He became a member of the Phi Gamma Delta fraternity and graduated in 1949 with a degree in speech and a minor in radio. Carson was so passionate about radio and comedy that for his final thesis, he made a recording of all his favorite comedians like Bob Hope, Jack Allen, and Milton Bell, entitled How to Write Comedy Jokes. Johnny Carson, fresh out of college, started his radio career at WOW Radio in Omaha. On August 1, 1949, the Johnny Carson Show went on air for 45 minutes in the morning. Just two months later, he tied the knot with his college sweetheart, Jody Walcott, who would be the first of four wives in his life. While working at the radio station, Carson gained recognition for his upbeat demeanor while reading the news. However, a new opportunity was waiting for him in Omaha, television. Like many others at the time, Carson was venturing into the unknown territory of television. But with his charming on-screen presence and sarcastic humor, he quickly became a well-known figure in the limited broadcast area of Wide Open West Television. Johnny Carson had tasted success with his television show, Squirrel's Nest. Encouraged by this, he decided to pursue his dreams of making it big in Hollywood, California. Despite facing many rejections, he finally got a job at KNXT, reading the station call letters, time and weather reports. Although this was a far cry from the fame he had experienced in Omaha, it was a start and he was grateful to be in Hollywood. A year later, Carson was given the opportunity to host his own show, Carson Cellar, which was aired at 7 p.m. This show proved to be a hit and served as the platform for many skits and characters that went on to become household names after being featured on The Tonight Show. Carson's early struggles and determination had paid off, and he had become a recognized figure in Hollywood. Johnny Carson was a hard-working individual, driven by his Midwestern upbringing. He would often put in extra hours, both in and out of the studio, to hone his craft. After his show, Carson Seller, was taken off the air, he took on various roles in the entertainment industry, including game show host for Earn Your Vacation and comedy writer for Red Skelton. His determination paid off when he was asked to fill in for a sick skeleton. This performance caught the attention of Columbia Broadcasting System, who offered him a contract shortly after. 
A year later, Johnny had his own half-hour comedy show, simply titled The Johnny Carson Show. Despite initial rumors of him becoming the next George Goebel, a highly successful television comedian, his program was canceled just four months later due to network layoffs and interference. With a wife and three sons to support, Carson found himself unemployed and without a contract from Columbia Broadcasting System. He was forced to accept a job as game show host for Do You Trust Your Wife? which eventually became Who Do You Trust? on the ABC network, and moved to New York City. Johnny Carson moved to New York City, where he faced a new set of challenges. Despite this, he continued to work hard, determined to make a name for himself. In 1957, Carson had the opportunity to interview Ed McMahon, who would later become synonymous with Johnny Carson and The Tonight Show. Carson's hard work began to pay off as he started making appearances on other television shows. He substituted for Jack Parr on The Tonight Show for two weeks in 1958 and did a comedy routine for The Perry Como Show. The Tonight Show, which had originated with Steve Allen on the radio in Los Angeles, made its way to television in New York in 1954. The show aired every night from 11.15 p.m. to 1 a.m. and was watched by millions of viewers. Jack Parr was the host for a little over two years before Johnny Carson took over on October 1, 1962. From that moment on, Johnny Carson became a television legend and The Tonight Show became a part of television history. For over three decades, Johnny Carson had a magnetic on-screen presence that made him the perfect host for The Tonight Show. His opening monologue, impeccable comedic timing, delivery, and gestures, as well as his respectful treatment of guests, earned him a place as the king of late-night television. His approach was simple, if his guests were shining, then so would the show. And shine they did. Carson welcomed an array of some of the country's most talented performers to his stage, from local talents to household names such as Ethel Kennedy, Buddy Hackett, Ed Ames and his Tomahawk, Pearl Bailey, Bob Hope, Dean Martin, and George Goebel. All of these guests took the time to chat with Carson and discuss their latest projects, creating unforgettable moments on the show. Carson's show, The Tonight Show, was a platform that could make or break a performer's career. Many aspiring comedians such as David Letterman, Jay Leno, George Carlin, and Joan Rivers got their big break after appearing on the show. Not just human guests, but wild animals also made their way onto the stage, creating unforgettable and hilarious moments. Despite his charismatic stage presence, Carson was known to be quite different off the air. He was reserved and preferred to keep his distance from others, reserving his charm and warmth for his audience. He was married three times and often incorporated his personal life experiences, including his divorce proceedings and settlements, into his monologues. Currently, he is married to Alex Mass, whom he met in 1984. After captivating millions of viewers for 30 years, 4,531 broadcasts of The Tonight Show, Johnny Carson was ready to step down as host. On May 22, 1992, he bid farewell to his fans with his iconic golf swing. He then retired to Malibu, where he spent his days playing tennis and overseeing his production company. Despite his retirement, he considered the possibility of releasing The Tonight Show reruns for cable syndication. Despite being a lifelong smoker, Carson remained active, even in his later years. Sadly, his health declined, and he was diagnosed with emphysema. On January 23, 2005, he passed away at the age of 79 due to complications from the disease. Carson left behind his wife, Alexis, and two sons, Christopher and Corey. Tragically, his third son, Richard, had died in a car accident in 1991. Carson's passing was mourned around the world. His successor, Jay Leno, spoke fondly of him, saying that he still felt like a guest in his house. Johnny Carson will always be remembered as the king of late-night television. Rest in peace.